if everyone would please take your seat. All right, Charles. Thank you so much for joining us tonight or today, everybody. I'm coming to our modest exhibit celebrating the 100th centennial of the Chestnut family and their wonderful business here in Gainesville. I'm um, Jana Roman. I'm the librarian for African American Studies, and it's been my honor to pull together an exhibit that in some small way reflects all the wonderful things um, that the family's done for this community since Gosh, their um, great, 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 great grandfather came here in the 1860s. So um, we'll start our program with a welcome from Dean Judy Russell. Thank you, Well, good afternoon and, and welcome. I'm delighted that you are all here with us this afternoon to uh, share this exhibit celebrating the centennial of the Chestnut Funeral Home. We're really delighted that so many members of the Chestnut family and extended family um, are here with us today. This family has contributed so much to our community here in Gainesville and in the county for so many years that it's really wonderful to have all of you join us in celebrating the funeral home and the family and their contributions. So while this celebration is focused on the centennial of the funeral home, I think it's important to take a few minutes, and I think some of the other speakers will um, speak about this in more depth, but to think about the Chestnut's history and their influence, which extends much farther back, as Jana said, to a great, great, great grandfather, Johnson Chestnut, who was a talented master carpenter and freeman who moved to Alachua County in around 1868, bringing his wife, Maria, and his brother, Edward, and his son, Lawrence, and four other children. Uh, to the rich farmlands and liberal political environment of Reconstruction Florida. So um, he and his family flourished. They bought a good deal of land in the town. There's uh, an interesting set of deeds in the ancient records, as they call them, at the Alachua County Clerk's Office and on their website. They were very active in the community. Uh, he served as a city councilman and as a trustee of the Union Academy, which was the Freeman Bureau School for African Americans, and he helped found the Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. His son Lawrence Chestnut was educated at Union Academy and was also active in politics. He named his own son Charles Sumner Chestnut in honor of a respected leader of anti-slavery forces during the Civil War and a champion of freemen's rights, Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts. Senator, excuse me, <clears throat> I hope that the exhibit will help to elaborate how Charles Sumner Chestnut Sr lived up to the legacy of his weighty name and became an influential and successful businessman and leader in both the African-American and white communities in Gainesville. Living in the days of Jim Crow, the young Charles Sumner Chestnut at that time worked, as did many of his contemporaries, in service jobs such as custodian, butler, and Pullman porter. But in 1914, he became a partner with Matthew Hughes to found the Hughes and Chestnut funeral home, providing a unique and essential service to the African-American community. Harvard scholar Suzanne E. Smith, in her book, To Serve the Living, explains the unique role that black funeral directors have played in African-American life, saying, as individuals charged with orchestrating the African-American funeral, often described as a homecoming celebration in African-American folklore, Funeral directors have always been culturally valued for their ability to help their communities honor their dead with dignity and the requisite pageantry. As entrepreneurs in a largely segregated trade, funeral directors were usually among the few black individuals in any town or city who were economically independent and not beholden to the local white power structure. For these reasons, African American funeral directors often found themselves serving the living as much as they buried the dead. I believe you'll see the truth of this quote as you read the loving and praise-filled letters for Charles Sumner Chestnut Sr.'s service and ministries, part of the exhibit that you'll shortly be viewing. We hope that our modest exhibit speaks to the expansive service and leadership that the Chestnut family has shown over the years, both in their business and in their civic, political, and social endeavors. Many of the items on display in the case behind you here in room 1A and in the main exhibit upstairs in the grand reading room come from the collection of another prominent Gainesville African-American leader and friend of the Chestnut family, 
Educator A. Quinn Jones. My time here today is limited. I'm flying to Minneapolis this evening uh, for a business meeting, which is why I'm here in boots, even though it's beautiful, sunny Florida weather outside. <laughs> um, or I would take more time to speak of the roles that later members of the family have played in writing the story of Gainesville and the civil rights era. I was just speaking um, to Charles III a moment ago, and although we didn't know each other then and could not have foreseen the connection we would, we would make here in Gainesville so many years later, I was there with him uh, on the Mall to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak 50 years ago. It's a cherished memory and a matter of great pride that I was there that day to stand up with so many others for a more just society. I'll leave it to the family gathered here to embroider the rest of the chestnut tapestry. I thank you for coming, and I hope that you enjoy the exhibit and that you will come back often to enjoy the many special collections that we make available to the community and to the university. And thank you again very much for being here today and for letting us share in this special day and this special celebration. Thank you. Our sincere thanks to Dean Russell and Jana smith Ronan, Associate Chair, Library West, and Librarian for African American Studies and the Smathers Library for their partnership with the African American community in collecting and archiving our community's history. In the 1860s, when the Chestnut, Hale, Hawkins, Matheson, Trapp, and Whitaker families migrated or walked from Camden, South Carolina to Alachua County, who would have thought that we would stand here today to celebrate a business started by one of its descendants? Yes, we're all related. <laughs> the Chestnut family is particularly pleased with today's celebration. February 2013, the Chestnut Centennial Committee was created to begin planning for the 100th year celebration, allow me to introduce the members of the Centennial Committee in alphabetical order. Barbara Moore Austin, my little sister, <laughs> Client Relations and Community Outreach Director at the Chestnut Law Firm. LaKay Banks, and would you stand please? LaKay Banks, a community volunteer and the widow of Dr. C.W. Banks. Ivy Bell, Senior Planner at Alachua County Growth Management. Florida Bridgewater Alfred, who could not be with us today, is Director of Campus Communications and Outreach at the University of Florida. Gussie Campbell, President of the Visionaires and Retired Guidance Counselor. Phyllis Filer, who could not be with us today, is the Branch Public Services Administrator for the Alachua County Library District. Vivian Filer, President of the Cotton Club Restoration Society and retired Santa Fe nursing professor. Evelyn Fox, President of the NAACP. Janice Jan Phillips, Gainesville District Church of God by Faith, Community Relations Coordinator. Dr. Patricia Hilliot Nunn, UF professor and videographer extraordinaire. <laughs> Larry Saunders, funeral director, Chestnut Funeral Home. Aura White, retired superintendent of Takachali. And Rosa B. Williams, community volunteer and volunteer coordinator at Takachali. And last but not least, my co-chair, my husband, Charles S. Chestnut III, the third director and owner of Chestnut Funeral Home. Please stand. <laughs> <laughs> we have many family members here with us today as well, so let me introduce them. I think Chuck is en route. Our son, Christopher Chestnut, attorney Christopher Chestnut. All right, my brother and sister-in-law who traveled from Tallahassee a retired Lieutenant Colonel Jerry Moore and Sandra Moore, and my nephew Lambert. Okay. All right. Now, on the back of your program, you will find a listing for future events 
And finally, today I'm pleased to announce the Chestnut Funeral Home Mortuary Science Scholarship. The scholarship will be administered by the Alachua County Education Foundation. Checks should be made payable to the Education Foundation, and in the memo of the check, please write CFH Mortuary Scholarship. Gussie Campbell, stand again, please, and Barbara Austin will have donation envelopes for your tax-deductible donation. If you would like to mail it at a later date, we prefer earlier, but <laughs> if you'd like to mail it at a later date, that's fine. The first scholarship will be awarded uh, by the foundation to an Alachua County graduating senior in 2015. Thank you so much for your participation today, and now we will have uh, remarks from the chestnut gentleman. Thank you, uh, Cynthia, <clears throat> and let me thank uh, those of you who have come this afternoon to help celebrate uh, 100 years of history uh, with a business, but also a 100 years of history with a community, and a 100 years of history uh, that involves African-American people, European-American people, and actually involves all human beings, uh, which is truly most important to me. I don't need to kind of go through the history. One of the strangest things that tends to happen in life is that in those and, and thank God it's Black History Month. <laughs> Uh, let, let, let me say that. I often say sometimes I know that uh, our friends uh, sometimes will say, well, when is it over with? Uh, January is Martin Luther King. February is Black History Month. So in March, we can march on in March and <laughs> find something else to, to talk about. But African-American history gets to be very, very important. And uh, particularly... Uh, when it comes to those who were in slavery and who traveled with uh, their masters uh, to help found and to help establish and to help build uh, Palachua County. Uh, and um, that includes the city of Gainesville and all of the outlying areas. Uh, it's just so much that we can talk about that deals with Palachua County and those individuals who came from Camden, South Carolina. Uh, to uh, this area. Uh, most of us can start with Josiah T. Walls and, 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 and it's just it's so much history. And um, I am humbled uh, to in some way at this point in my life to be a part of that. We did not talk much about that when I was growing up. My great-grandmother never said anything to me about coming from Camden, South Carolina uh, as a slave. Uh, my granddaddy never said anything to me about that. My great-grandmother never said. I, they, they did not talk about that. There was this, I guess, this sense of establishing their roots and building something for themselves uh, as they moved uh, in, in this area. So I'm not going to stand here because I can go through quite a bit of my own personal experiences. Uh, being born here in 1940, uh, believe me, what I have seen and what I know uh, would be unbelievable uh, to a whole lot of people, and particularly this young generation. Uh, let me say it this way. I was interpreted at one point in time by this community, and particularly the majority community, uh, as being Malcolm X. And I, I was, you know, what bad to me, you know? Uh, and uh, a lot of things that 
It kind of happened to me. I got an army behind the civil rights movement. But those things are past and gone now. And the future is still ahead uh, of me. The future is still ahead of the family. And we're hoping that this younger generation will somehow, somehow, if we can, uh, get them to understand the contributions that uh, the historians uh, and the individuals who came here uh, from Camden, South Carolina, what they meant to this community and somehow in some way, hopefully from their offspring, what they will continue to mean to this community. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am uh, more than humbled uh, that all of you would think enough of us to, to come out this Sunday afternoon and support um, this family. Thank you. Um, you know, there's a famous African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to support a centennial celebration of business, an institution, in a community for over 100 years. I presently have the benefit of traveling all over the country, uh, interacting with uh, communities, interacting with mortuaries across the United States. And it is very rare um, to see a community that has, has been so, as supportive as this community has been of Chestnut Funeral Home. It's also rare to see some of the principles um, that Chestnut Funeral Home has instilled in me and in the community. And, and one, I highlighted it on Facebook for those of us who visited. You know, I, I've learned that Facebook is a haven for retirees. So since my mother's <laughs> retired, I don't even log on anymore. I just call and ask her what's on Facebook today. So, <laughs> but I, I saw Collins Duncan and, 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 and Nikki and Iris walk in and uh, I posted on Facebook the other day that my dad, oh, and let's just stand the Duncan family. Thank you, Brother Colonel. So, uh, growing up, my dad would always call me a bull in a china closet. So he always had a lot of insurance, and I was always very aggressive. But one of the things he always instilled in me was that um, other funeral homes in the community were not competitors, they were colleagues. And so I'm, ho I'm inviting him to the Florida bar to give that lecture as well to the lawyers. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think that's very important because one thing that I've seen throughout the country, not just in Gainesville, in the African-American funeral home industry is how supportive they are of each other. I mean, it is not foreign for one funeral home to call another funeral home for a bottle of fluid or to borrow a car or to cross train or we just need help in this and help in that. And that's what supports these institutions. And really, that is something worth noteworthy of preserving in our community. So I want to take a preview, if I may, for one moment. I uh, in encountered a, a Mr. Scarborough from North Carolina at the National Funeral Directors Convention. And he provided for me a picture of my father's embalming school class uh, from 1961. So again, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and, and really thank the community. Really, this is an opportunity for us to thank you because without your support, we wouldn't be here. And, and I just want to leave you with a, a thank you to everyone who's ever had any work or encounter with Chestnut Funeral Home. I can't explain what it's like. And I, I started to think of the principles. How, how is it that a business survives so long? But it truly is a business of love. Um, and I think about the folks growing up, when I worked at the funeral home, I mean, I was blessed to have Larry as my godfather, but I see Lorenzo Durr back there, that's like my big brother, and 
my big brother's on his way. Um, and, you know, I, my grandfather, great grandfather, died in 1977. I was born in 79, but I think of uh, Eddie Lee Martin, who was always a grandfather figure to me. Um, and, and so many people throughout the community who would look out for me, even on funerals. And I'm sure I annoyed many of you, but you smiled anyway, and I appreciate that. Uh, and so really, I just would like to take this moment to reciprocate the love and, and cannot express to you how humbled we are that you're here. Thank you so much for your support, not only today, but for the last 100 years. And hopefully, we can use this as a benchmark in the community, not to show, not to highlight the Chestnut family, or the Chestnut funeral home, but to show the youth today what can be done, and that we do have sustainable businesses in our community if they're run the right way. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have some more family members here. Not only is Collins Duncan a colleague, he's also my brother-in-law, just stand together. <laughs> Joined by his daughter Iris and our niece Nikki. And, and we are delighted to have the Secretary of Business Relations here, Vernon, Vernon Trapp's grandson, <laughs> Kenneth Lawson. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Christopher's godmother, Portia. <laughs> And I'd like to recognize some of our elected officials, our city commissioner, Yvonne henson Rawls, <laughs> the chairman of our school board, Dr. Gunnar Paulson, <laughs> co-chair of the school board, Dr. Leonetta McNeely, <laughs> and then we have some aspiring candidates here. And uh, I see Helen Warren, who's running for city commission. <laughs> Ken Carnell, who's running for uh, county commission. <laughs> and Abronce Martin, who's running for county judge. <laughs> we also have our first cousin, Clarence Bradley. For those of you who've been by the funeral home, Clarence and I have a date every Sunday after church. We work at the funeral home, so please drop by. We have been very busy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, who did I? Oh, Harvey, I'm sorry. Harvey Ward. Thank you. Harvey Ward. Now, we invite you to view the displays there behind you. One over to my left, the one directly in front of me. And then upstairs are letters and documents, but more importantly, letters that were written to Charles's grandfather in 1975. Some handwritten letters, a very funny one from Dr. Banks uh, that you must read. And so I think that you will enjoy going through the notebooks, looking at the artifacts up there. And please, we invite you to uh, enjoy the refreshments. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next event is March 23rd, which will be a viewing of the uh, Chestnut film, which was being made by Dr. Patricia Hilliard Nunn. And on March 30th, at the funeral home, we will have the dedication of the state marker right outside the funeral home, March 30th. After that, there will be a reception at the Matheson Center. Thank you so much, and we appreciate you for joining us. Janice, is there something? Something else? Thank you.
Okay, that's that's her husband. Once you point it out, then I see it. Yeah. 